Hi, I'm Mary Jane Toth. I want to thank you for joining us today as we work through another recipe from my book, A Cheesemaker's Journey. Hello everyone and welcome to my kitchen. I'm Mary Jane Toth, author of A Cheesemaker's Journey. And today I want to show you how to make a chive and garlic cheese using a press. This is a delicious, rich cheese, easy to make. In fact, when my kids were growing up, this was one of their favorite cheeses. In my book, I give the cheeses a rating from one to five, from easy to hard, and I give this a number two. Now, for the equipment that you're gonna need and the ingredients to make this cheese, you're going to need to have a thermometer. This is a cheese thermometer, one that goes from 40 to 220, and has a beautiful little clip on the side that you can use to hang on the pot and monitor your milk. We also will need some measuring spoons, a couple of measuring cups, a one-third cup size and a one cup, and then we will need a spoon to help us stir the curds. And then I have a cheese vat back here, which is basically a double boiler type system where you have water in the bottom of one pot, and we're going to use this to put our other pot inside of it. That will help us to cook the curds evenly and keep us from scorching the milk. Then you're also going to need a colander that will help you to drain the curds. You're also going to need a cheese press. Now this one is from Hager Supply. They're the only ones that sell this particular press. I've been using this press for over 20 years. I absolutely love it. And then you're going to need some cheesecloth. This also is from Hager Supply. It is the best cheesecloth I've ever used. I want to show it to you how nice it is. It's made of a cotton muslin. It's washable, bleachable, and reusable many times. And now for the ingredients. We are going to need some fresh chopped chives. You can also use dried chives. They work equally well. We are going to use some sea, um, cheese salt. This is a fine grade salt that is used in, for making cheese and it, because it dissolves so easily. You can also use any non-iodized salt. Then you're going to need some rennet. I prefer the liquid variety. This is a vegetarian one. Do not use Junket brand rennet from the store. It is not cheese making quality and meant for making cheese. Then we're also going to use a little garlic powder. You can get creative and use the fresh garlic if you like. We are going to use some cultured buttermilk. Then you need to have some cool water and also fresh whole milk. Now you can use goat milk, cow milk, sheep milk, any kind of milk will work. This just happens to be whole milk from the grocery store. Now that I've added my two gallons of whole milk to the pot, we need to put the thermometer in and bring the temperature up to 86 degrees. Now that our milk has reached 86 degrees, we are ready to add our culture and our rennet. And for our culture, we're using a cultured buttermilk. This happens to be a homemade one. And we need one cup of cultured buttermilk. And let's get a spoon and give that a good stir. And then we need to add one teaspoon of liquid rennet to one third cup of cool water. There's our rennet. And now for our cool water. Liquid rennet mixes so nicely. Just dissolves instantly the minute that water hits it. And now we're gonna add it to our milk and give it a good stir. Stirring all the while we're pouring it in so that we have it evenly distributed. And that's all you need to do. And now we need to let it sit so it can coagulate for 45 minutes. And be sure to put a lid on the pot when you're doing this because you don't want anything to get into your cheese and contaminate it. Once you've placed your curds into the pot, you want to let it heat up for about five minutes, maybe ten at the most, and then you need to come in and gently stir with your hand. This will help you to break up the curds and help the heat to be dispersed evenly. And you're going to want to do this about once every five to ten minutes during the next thirty minutes until the curds start to feel kind of rubbery.
Our curds have now firmed up enough and we're ready to drain them. So let's take them over to the sink where I've already prepared a cheesecloth lined colander. And I'm going to place this into the sink. We'll have all the way go down the sink then we won't have a big mess. And then we're going to pour our curds into the sink. Hang on to your pot because when we get done draining the curds, we're going to be putting them back in the pot to mix in the chives and garlic. Our currants have already drained enough and now we're ready to begin the pressing process. So let's place them back into our pot and take them over here and begin adding our chives and garlic. Okay, for this we're going to need some fresh garlic. You can also use dried, not a problem. Either one works perfectly fine. This is going to be about a two pound wheel of cheese. And the chives you just kind of add until they look good. You can add more if you like or less if you like. The amount doesn't really matter. It's all to personal preference. And then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Sprinkle it lightly over the curds. And then we're going to add a couple teaspoons of our cheese salt. And here's where you're going to put your hands into the curds and get a little bit messy, but it's a lot of fun too. So I'm going to just Take the pan with the curds in and start mixing them up with my hand. And this is real easy to do if you just continue to stir and break the curds up as you work the chives and garlic and salt into it. Smells so wonderful. Those fresh chives really are a nice addition. Our curds are ready to be put to the press now, so I'm just going to set this pot aside and I've brought a little 9 by 13 pan out just so I can show you how the press is going to work and get the curds in there without having whey run all over my cupboard. Normally I would just do this over the sink because then the whey is going to run right down the drain and it wouldn't be a problem. So this is our cheese press and here's our cheesecloth that we showed you earlier. We need to take these little wing nuts off. Okay. The part I'm removing right now, this is called the brace bar, and it's also got the crank on it. And then this is called the hoop, and this is called the wood follower, and this is our base. So what we want to do is we want to set the base into the pan so that we can let the whey run off in the pan, and then we want to put our hoop in place. Try to center it if you can because it'll be a little bit easier when you go to line up the wood follower. Now you're going to want to line your hoop with your cheesecloth and just leave this extra cheesecloth hanging on the outside for right now. It'll be just fine. And then we're going to scoop our curds into the press. So just use your hands, scoop them in there. Your temptation is to stick your hand in there and take a good big bite because they smell so good. Okay. And then after you've got the curds put into the hoop, just kind of smooth them around on the top so they're just evenly setting in there. Okay, let me wipe my hand off for a minute. And now all this excess cheesecloth that you have sitting here, we're just going to kind of fold it in. You can see how this whole little device is neat. It's going to make a beautiful pressed round cheese. Okay. Now, we need to place the wood follower on first, and this has a little hole in the middle so that when you have the crank come down on it, it doesn't drill a hole through your wood follower. So let's place that on there. And then we're going to put on the bridge piece. Make sure that it lines up with that little hole, and if it doesn't, you can kind of adjust it at this point by just looking at it. You see how it kind of snapped into place? Now all we need to do is put the wing nuts back on. and screw them down until that brace bar actually rests right on the hoop. There we go. Okay, now you're ready to begin the pressing process. 
Now what you want to do is turn this hand crank, which turns real easily at first, until you feel some kind of resistance. As you can see right now, I can do it with my little finger. That's no resistance. But as it gets a little bit harder to press, it becomes harder for my finger, then you just take your hand and turn the crank until you feel some resistance coming back at you. And the way starts to run out. You can see it really good on my side. Let me show you. See how the way is kind of running out of the bottom of the press? So it's starting to press the curds. Now what you need to remember with the cheese press is you don't want to press the curds as hard as you can press them. You'll end up with a dry, rubbery cheese you won't like. You need to let that whey come out rather slowly. So the idea that is that we need to keep this cheese in this press for two hours, and during that two hours time, we want to keep a constant pressure on as best as we can. And so to do that, we crank it down till we feel that resistance, and then we just kind of walk away and do something else for 10, 15 minutes. And when you come back walking by the cheese press and you happen to touch it, you might notice that the pressure has released because the cheese has begun to shrink down. When that happens, just give it another few turns until you feel the resistance again and walk away. And you're going to do that for several times, maybe four or five times during that whole two hour period. After two hours, we'll come back and see what this cheese looks like when we have a nice, beautiful cheese. Now that our cheese has been in the press for two hours, it's time for us to take it out. So you just need to take off these wing nuts. Once you get them going, they're real easy. You just kind of spin them off. Okay. Now comes the fun part. We get to see the fruits of our labor. Just take and push down on that and it will be released from the hoop. Take off the follower and just remove it from the base. And we'll open up our cheesecloth and see our beautiful wheel of cheese. Mm. Peel off the cheesecloth very gently because you don't want to tear the rind or anything. And at this stage, you would set this on a plate and put it in the refrigerator and let it chill down for a little while. But let's set it here and cut out a slice so you can see just how beautifully this cheese does slice. Now, how fantastic is that? That cheese is gorgeous, delicious, ready for slicing after it's chilled for a couple of hours, best eaten with some really good crackers. Yum. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Toth, author of A Cheesemaker's Journey, and I'd like to tell you about something exciting that's happening at HagerFarmyard.com. I'd like to invite you to become part of our online cheesemaking community. You're going to find helpful articles, recipes and videos, and even a forum on there where you can post cheese making questions. I'm very excited to be part of this adventure, and I look forward to helping you be successful in your own cheese making journey.